Dan, I went on a shopping trip today, uh, this morning, and uh, I don't know. Are you, what's your opinion on these self-checkouts? Well, first, what did you buy me? Anything? Did you get me anything? I didn't get you anything. All right. Well, then, let's see. (laughs) (laughs) No, my my opinion on self-checkouts, I don't know. I'm kind of, um, I use them quite a bit. Do you? But yeah, I actually do. Uh, because nine, nine times out of 10, you see all the checkout lanes where people should be, but no one is there. So you really uh-huh. have no option. <laughs> yeah. I don't like them. I, I will say that I refuse to use them. Uh, I got my reasons, <laughs> Ooh. but, uh, like today I was at an impasse. I was like at a, I was at a dollar general and I, when I go to Home Depot or I don't, it's not that I don't shop at Walmart. I just don't go to it. I re, I refuse to use the self checkout. I will. And if it means that I will stand in line for a human to ring me out, I will do it. I have my reasons. Uh, but today, uh, the, there was one lady that worked there and she wanted me to use the, the self checkout. And I says, I you know, would prefer a human. And she's like, well, this is, this is it, (laughs) you know? (laughs) So I was kind of, uh, strong armed into using the self checkout. And I just, I come from the retail, uh, arena. I was in upper management. I know how these retailers work. I know why there are self checkouts. It's not for convenience. Uh, It's so the retailer can cut payroll. And, yeah, and their use, convenience. And use less pe- yeah, <laughs> their convenience. They use less people in the store. Yep. And I just don't want to participate in there. It's like when I go to the bank, um, I take my checks to the bank. And uh, the lady is always like saying, well, you know, we have online banking. And I'm thinking, lady, you shouldn't be saying that because, <laughs> you know, if I'm if everyone uses online banking, your job won't be needed anymore um oh yeah that's that's true i guess you know know, that's that is one but if you if i guess if you could provide service to more people by having you know the self-checkouts or the online banking then that might also be a benefit to the company like i'm i'm a big user of online banking electronic Uh so I'm, i'm kind of the opposite of you (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This self checkout though. So here's the deal. Uh, retailers, I have said this before, I think in a previous episode, these retailers are fascinating organizations. It's kind of like if you're a baseball fan, these saber metrics. Now it's such a rich environment of data uh, where people can know about what, what batting order you go against, which pitcher and what kind of weather, you know, day game, night game. Yes. They're really, yep. really deep in the weeds with data and retailers are exactly the same way. Uh, if you ever look at your receipt, there's all kinds of gibberish numbers on there. There's what is known as T numbers. Uh, there's transit, there's transaction numbers and all of these numbers go into a computer and they calculate data, 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 and they know what gets bought, you know, they know what sells on days that it's raining more than days in the winter time or the summertime. Uh, they know if someone buys this product that it's most likely going to be bought with a, with a, with another product with it. <laughs> I'm serious. These retailers, oh, yeah. I'm talking about the national retailers, they got it going on. So here comes the self checkouts and it's not for convenience. It's because they know that they can save a lot of payroll by firing all of the cashiers. <laughs> you yes. know, I mean, it, it sounds harsh, <laughs> but that's that's what they're doing. And they know that they're, the term they use is shrink, which is theft or unaccounted loss. Um, you know, you could accidentally not ring something out. It's not, you're not, you know, it's an honest mistake, but it is still shrink to the retailer. Yep. It's still a loss. So they know their shrink is going to go up. They absolutely know that, but they know that uh, the savings that they're going to have on payroll, on benefits, you know, workman's compensation claims, all of these things uh, are going to go way down and more than offset what they're going to lose in product. And that's the shame of it. I just don't want to participate in that. 
Yeah, I, I can I can understand that. However, I can also see, <laughs> you know, <laughs> from the sole purpose of me as a hobbyist, I have a self-serve roadside stand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't want to be out there taking the firewood to people. So... I don't know. Well, that makes you that makes you a bad person then, because you're not hiring someone that could be doing that job by sitting out there, right? But <laughs> all day waiting for someone to buy something. <laughs> there you go. So uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's an interesting dynamic because when the store is not busy, do you want to be paying ten people to stand around and wait for someone to run through the checkout? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm here That's... to tell you. Have you been in a dollar store lately? I mean, they're train wrecks. You can't even walk down the <laughs> aisles. You know, there's there's stuff in boxes that came in off the previous truck still sitting on the floor because they have their payroll cut back so far in these stores that they can't even get their product up on the shelves. And they're still they're they're relying on the customers to cash you out, you know, cash themselves out. I pretty soon I think the customers are going to be in charge of having the stock the, the shelves. shelves. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> uh -huh. The reason this is relatable to what what I went through at Dollar General today is I just saw in the news that these retailers now are are starting to remove the self checkouts because they're losing way more than what they had ever expected. People are just stealing everything right out the front door, or uh, you know the 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 technology isn't good enough. The items aren't getting scanned right. Uh, or people are just making mistakes because customers aren't as trained as effectively as a cashier working for that company would be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I've been seeing like the stores I go to, I've been seeing the complete opposite. I always go in and, and there's cashiers, but the majority of people are choosing the self checkout. I don't know why. I mean, I do, but <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. I guess it's just something that, you know, with the, I guess, technology getting better, I don't know, the option, uh -huh. I think you can check out, you know, if I'm standing in line with two items, do I want to wait behind someone with 50 or do yeah. I just want to quick run over, scan my stuff and go? It's all about but I me, think all Joe. It's all about me. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> all of this, I think, falls under the heading of uh, being your job being replaced by a computer or a robot or a machine. It's almost like, I, I've thought of this too, you know, keep in mind, <laughs> I grew up in a steel town and I remember what was going on. I was born in the sixties. I remember what was going on in the early seventies uh, with, you know, workers being replaced by, by machines, you know, yeah. and, and all the factories being moved overseas. I remember all this. So I do have a bit of a chip on my shoulder, uh, but at the same time too, you know, here I am, a moderately successful firewood company, and I don't hire anyone. I buy machines instead. You know, it's like the computers that are now being used to replace a function, a job that was previously done by a human. Um, you know, it's like this evolution of, of minimizing your labor costs. And that's what I do. I buy machines that make my firewood for me. Uh, but now, you know, we're into computers that do all this for you. I mean, you don't, bank tellers are probably becoming an extinct um, enterprise. Like they're going the way of travel agents yes. uh, or, or writers. You know, now I'm learning, you know, all these news sites that you see on the internet, they're not being written by humans. A lot of them, it's being written by AI, yes. artificial intelligence. AI is the wave, the big wave coming. The yeah. big way, actually, it's here. AI is is here a lot more than it's already here. What you, you but think. there's like two things about AI, though. There's one of it's displacing workers, uh, but then the other one is is that it's thinking and learning. It's going, you know, people that are fearful of it becoming too smart, and then we're like at the first ten minutes of the Terminator, <laughs> the movie. <laughs> well, the one thing to remember with AI, and this is, I work with AI quite a bit uh, for my day job. And right from the beginning, we were always told AI is not going to replace someone, but AI is going to replace someone not using AI. So if you can use AI, like it's out there and it's growing every day, the more and more possibilities. And I think like AI is going to find a way into the firewood industry. 
You think? Oh yeah. I, I, I think it already <laughs> I think it already sort of has in not so much the sense that maybe as far technologically advanced as you might think, but for instance on your four oh five, it has a sensor that continues to resplit the perfect split until nothing's left. Right. right? So imagine um, a machine that has more sensors that can sense more things and make the job more, I guess, automated and maybe safer, you know? Yeah. Where I don't have to think because there's still a lot of thinking that I have to do when I'm running that machine there, you know, I still got to like, I can look at a log and forecast the challenge that that log presents me. Yes. And you're saying like, <laughs> AI could one day do all that for me as well. Yeah, possibly. Or something like uh, when your log is being fed into your processor, uh, it's measuring out you know, a 16 inch cut. It's maybe scanning the entire log to see how many cuts are in that log. It then calculates volume, which then sends to your inventory, which then you can track and keep, you know, just all this, all yeah. these data points that you could use to your advantage. So like it could, like, let's, I mean, this is kind of interesting here. So like AI, let's, you know, a supercomputer could calculate the entire length of the log, calculating any twist and, and bend in it. And instead of cutting perfect 16 inch pieces, leaving like a five inch off cut, it would auto adjust so that it's cutting like 16 and a quarter inch pieces, you know? Uh, yes. minim minimizing waste. Right. Or it could scan it and say that it knows the first cut to just slice off two inches to get that out of the way. And now the rest of the log is perfect. Perfect cuts. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> one, I guess I, you know, I mean, we shouldn't uh, doubt anything, I guess anything's possible, but, but uh, then who would have ever you know, thunk that, it, I mean, who would think that we would have had a computer controlled firewood processor? You right, know, like the 405. And then I seen like the new Easton made uh, processor. I saw Andrew Easton running on a video of his. It looked pretty self-automated too, didn't it? Right. You grab the handles, you pull the triggers, and as long as those triggers are held down, the machine pretty much runs itself. And again, this could go to, you know, further down the line as far as like keeping track of your inventory. Um you know, even keeping track of when it when certain logs and wood was split, and when it will potentially be ready to, to sell. I mean, there's, the possibilities are really endless when you start thinking about all the things that yeah you may not have thought about before. And that's just on production. I'm thinking of sales already. For instance, uh, now there's like a lot of intuition. I had a, a friend, um, well, he's still my friend, but he used to work <laughs> at McDonald's. He was a manager at McDonald's and he said on rainy days, they would uh, mix more pancake batter because they would sell, they always sold more pancakes on rainy days. So now I would think, you know, that there's probably a computer out there that can read all types of data, all types of input about um, what is going to be sold in a restaurant on a particular day. You know, there might be a high school football game that night, you know, so they're going to get a rush at a particular time in yep. relation to when the crowd's coming and going. Um, I'm serious. That's where I get back to like the retail, the retailers, uh, these guys, I'm serious. They have that like Walmart, their, their distribution center has that input to it when they know that there's a storm coming to a particular town it it sends all the ice scrapers, <laughs> you know, one right. direction. Uh, it'll send the winter wipers uh, to a different store because of, you know, weather, weather changes. Yeah. And, and now imagine even one step further where you have all of this data that you're taking in and you're, you're, you know, you don't have to manually do it. But then let's say Firebirds, your number one customer, they have a similar system that through an API can send you data that will then show however much wood they've used. And you can kind of calculate out when you're going to need to deliver or what, you know, it just all those things start getting connected and you become more efficient. Yeah. It can set, it can forecast. Huh? Yes. Yeah. 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 When I think of, when I hear AI and AI is in the news a lot right now, 
artificial intelligence. It seems to be on that negative connotation where it's resulting in people losing their jobs, you know, and that's where I'm sensitive to that because of where I grew up. But, you know, machines have been doing that forever since Eli Whitney <laughs> invented, <laughs> yep. the, invented the cotton gin. You know, it, it, it minimized the amount of labor that you needed for as much production as you can get out of that machine. Uh, and, and you see that in any machine and every machine that was ever made. I mean, that's why we make them. That's why we started using rocks to open up coconuts. You know, uh, we, we've always looked for tools as a solution. And now it seems like, and that's where I have a theory about artificial intelligence and all this negativity coming. It's because when we had machines that replaced labor, people in the steel mills, people in the lumber yards, uh, when, when machines displaced labor, you know, that was just a great development in uh, human technology and in the economy. But now that we have a machine, and I would call, is it safe to say AI, a computer is a machine, you know? Yep. It seems suppose, like yeah. now that we have AI is now um, putting different level of a different type of labor at risk. For instance, the people who wear suits, <laughs> lawyers, politicians, you know, where a supercomputer that can learn can think and, and uh, give a policy and direction a lot better than any human can. Now, all of a sudden, it's a problem. Right. It's at <laughs> everyone's disposal. You can you can go in and you can ask a question and you can get an answer that has been generated by all the information out there. And that's what's that gets back to my point of. You know, AI won't replace someone, but it's going to replace someone that doesn't use AI to then further their business or their services that they provide. Yeah. I wonder where I am deficient, like right now, where AI exists that could help me. Um, I, I talked with this one guy. He's a YouTuber. And he relies on a that um, chat. What's it called? Chat GPT. The uh, yeah, yep. he uses that for his uh, social media stuff. He uses that to write his content now instead of him writing it himself. <laughs> um, I wonder what um, he's not a firewooder, by the way. Nah. Uh, I wonder what exists out there or what I'm doing right now that AI would completely probably AI would tell me quit quit selling firewood <laughs> <laughs> what it, what answer or what it would give you if, what questions you would ask of it yeah i guess it just would depend on where you think you could you would need um you know questions answered in your business like where where yeah. are things that you know for me i'm thinking of stuff like i said back to the machines like you know having log splitters that maybe auto adjust their wedge so that every split is perfectly centered or you know just stuff that things where it takes the guesswork out of things or calculating your volume, knowing how much is in a, a pile of, you know, you run a, you run a bunch of splits into a pile, but the whole time it was calculating how much that was. So, you know, your pile right there is two thirds of a cord. Yeah. What we need is an AI stacker. Yes. I uh, think there's going to be, <laughs> I think I don't think that's as far off with some of the robotics that I've been seeing as well. Oh, that'd be a robotic stacker. Yeah. Could you imagine that? Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you know robots are certainly the uh, I think a a barometer of the advanced civilization. That's where, you know, part of the motivation where we have the UFO question in our woodhounded session of an interview. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of tongue in cheek because I just, I don't believe now I believe there are UFOs, like things flying around out there that we don't know what in the heck they are. Uh, but there I'm there's, are you telling me that an advanced civilization is going to send an organic living being, you know, zillions <laughs> of light years to come around here and fly around our globe and, and not stop and say hi. It just makes no sense to me. They would send, they would send a robot, you know, or 
a nanobot, something that is just so small and tiny that you can't even see it. Yep. That's my, that's my position. So that's yep. why <laughs> uh, I think, you know, that is the future is robots and, and AI. Uh, but I don't know. Do you think that it's, are you one of these um, uh, people that think that it's going to lead to the end of the world? No, not at all. I don't, I don't either. No. And, and like, <laughs> even in the case of robots, like you might say you did have a robot that, came and worked in your wood yard and stacked wood someone somewhere still has to build that robot someone has to service that robot someone has to program that you know there's multiple jobs that would still be needed by humans for that robot to even exist well that is where the you know the end of the world people would tell you no that ai and the robots can become so intelligent that they can do that task for you that they could even you know, write the programs and build the machines. And then uh, they would, <laughs> they would program them to come and, and bludgeon you at your house with a sledgehammer. <laughs> <laughs> why is I it that know. people, why is it that when people think of AI and robots and the ultimate outcome, how come it's always that they're going to be doing evil? You know, why couldn't yes. they, why Doom couldn't they just be like, you know, be happy and fun? <laughs> And come mow my grass and tell me to have a good day. Right. Yeah. I, I think the whole, you know, change invokes fear and fear just leads down those paths of, you know, this is bad. This is the end of the world. AI, AI is bad. This and yeah. that. You know. I think a lot of that is fun as a thought experiment, you know, just to see where you can lead your brain. But I think of things also on a practical scale. I think of me how old I am and how much longer I'll be doing firewood. And I have a strong suspicion, you know, like in five years from now, I'm probably going to be driving an F-150 and, <laughs> and stacking wood in a customer's driveway and thanking them and, and then yep. drive, dr leaving in my hovercraft, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't think the changes are going to happen that fast. I just see more and more things being connected as far as from production, even like with the timber industry, you know, on down the line to the customer and yeah. just having a way to, again, to your point about the big retailers, there's a reason why they gather and, and collect and analyze the data. And if yeah. you were able to do that, you know, would, would you, would you want someone, would you want to hire someone to like track all your sales, track the days, track the weather, do all track events at restaurants or, you know, AI does it for you. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that gets back to the human element of it too, because you know, my, I have a program that all my sales gets typed into and serious. It will spit out every, um, report you could possibly imagine. Yep. I don't, I don't consume them though. I literally don't care about them. <laughs> I just look at very, very few, um, key performing indicators, KPIs. I learned that term Ooh. from an accountant. Yeah. Right. But you know that there are now computer controlled, uh, stoves. Yeah. The yes. EPA stoves. And I yes. see that as the future for our industry too, where, you know, when you go to bed, do you turn the, the flu to this or to that, or you let this much air in where the computer does it for you? Yep. Automatic. And you don't have to, yeah. And you don't have to think about it. And the computer can help minimize, uh, particulate matter, you know, emissions and, uh, maximize your, your, your fuel. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think there's all kinds of things like that. And, and, you know, back to the point, like, Tomorrow morning, if you woke up and you got a notification on your phone that said, you know, eight months from now, your inventory needs to be at this level and you therefore need to, in the next three days, produce X number of cords to meet that inventory <laughs> demand. You know, you would have things like that at your disposal, whether you want to look at it and pay attention or not, but it just takes the guesswork out of things. And then I would tell AI, if you're so smart, you do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where, well someday maybe you could be you know type yeah. in a, on your phone you fire up the 405 from your couch and you have a couple joysticks and you're just running the logs right <laughs> remotely <laughs> right 
Yeah. yeah, I had talked to Log Hauler Jesse about that one time. It seemed like he could, you know, because he climbs up on top of that crow's nest. And, and I'm serious. You could knock yourself off the off that crane with a log. Yeah. It seems like why, or maybe it exists where the joysticks are in the cab in the comfort of his truck. And he could just do it like that, you know, where there's yeah. cameras and, and all, you know, where like a, just a full vision uh, of his of his view where he can just like grab logs and and lay them down and not even have to get out of his truck yeah i i think someday that will definitely be a possibility i mean we have people flying drones from las vegas in the middle east <laughs> you know like it's, yeah it's possible everything is i remember there was elon musk was speaking to i don't know it was like a, it was a bunch of military people uh, I think it was about the future of warfare, leveraging technology. And he had, was just sitting on stage and he said uh, that um, we are pretty soon, we won't need uh, fighter pilots anymore. You know, and like everyone chuckled and stuff, but, uh, you know, maybe he's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't well, know. You, you, know you see drones and stuff. What's the, uh, what's the next logical step of that? I would say the next logical step for me would be a drone that delivers a bundle of firewood anywhere in my city limits. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Just watch where you drop it. Well, that they have that in some of the large, you know, metros. They have drone deliveries from Amazon. You can get That's certain amazing. size packages right to your door. And... Yeah. I saw, isn't it like Domino's <laughs> or someone? They have like a self-driving delivery vehicle or something. Yeah, and Jeez. and in China, I saw where if you're in a park, you can have a Starbucks delivered by drone to you. It's <laughs> it's <laughs> wild stuff, man. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but you know, now we're getting back to the beginning of all of this. You know, all of this means is cutting payroll, cutting jobs, taking away the opportunity for a person, a man or a woman, you know, to work for a living and earn and provide to the family. You know, yeah. that's where. And that's, that, that gets back to me and what level am I going to, and I'm very hypocritical. I admit it, but you know, I, I will, I will go to the human at the cash register and I will go to the bank and have the teller cash my checks. Uh, but at the same point too, you know, I don't, I haven't hired anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and with that, I think that, that is do, <laughs> do as I say and not as I do. Right. right? There you go. <laughs> All right, yeah. Dan. Well, this was fun. I um, part of me is I would just love to see what technology can do to our industry, you know, because I always said we're a 19th century industry and we're being yep. drug into the 21st century right now. Uh, but, man, I don't know. A lot of that's exciting. I'd love to see it. I would too. And I would love to hear if uh, any Woodhounds out there, what are your thoughts and what are your ideas of how you could incorporate technology and AI into your firewood operation? Because, you know, sometimes yeah. ideas that start from the grassroots, that's how they work their way up into the, into the industry, in the manufacturing. Yeah. Not just production, but uh, billet maintenance, you know, handling, stacking, loading, uh, yes. distribution, uh, bundles mini firewood <laughs> and and yeah and just to be clear when we say ai we mean artificial not actual intelligence because we do need <laughs> we also need actual intelligence in the wood yard some days <laughs> yeah i could use a little bit more of that at my place yeah. <laughs> there i wouldn't you have go. to drive back to my house five times because i keep forgetting everything <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Dan, uh, how about let's strike up the band and let's go be super intelligent out in the wood yard together. Yes, that sounds like a great idea. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to the Woodhounds, the number one firewood podcast in the world. And you can find us on all major streaming services. Yeah. And we want to thank everyone for uh, helping us become the number one firewood podcast in the world. And please consider uh, rating us a five star. It absolutely helps us in being found uh, when others are watching, uh, watching podcasts. And Dan, I will tell you to be safe 
and stay artificially intelligent. Yes. And have a great day.